Grace and peace. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. My name is Chris Bailey, and we're talking about the experience of unity in the church in this series. And today we're going to look at generosity and greed in the experience of unity in the church. But before we do that, let's go to our focus verse, Acts 2, verse 42. Let's read it together. It says, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Father, speak to us, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. When we think about the church, it's easy to focus on the idea of doctrine. Doctrine is the basis for our fellowship. We can't just stop at doctrine, but as social creatures made to exist, not independently, but to exist or coexist as brothers and sisters, fellowship is as important as doctrine. Sound fellowship is as important as sound doctrine. And one of the things that we see in the early church is that for the believer, giving is a part of this fellowship. But keep in mind, this giving should be as volitional as unity. Volitional is just a big word for voluntarily or choosing to do so, not being forced or mandated. Well, for the believer, we've already seen that unity is not something that can be forced. It's not compulsory. It has to develop naturally by our surrender or our choice to be in fellowship with one another. As such, so should our giving be. If everything else is volitional, where do we and why do we get on this track where giving now becomes something mandated or forced when it's supposed to be fruitful, a result of a seed or a choice? When you go to Acts 4.34, it says, neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the pieces or brought and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. This was something that was done voluntarily. This was something that was done totally outside of the auspices of a program, but rather it was a choice of the heart. Remember, that's how we started this whole series. The idea of unity being intentional. And you could even say today, unity being volitional. So in the same way, our giving should be as fluid. It should be as natural as it was now to come together because we all love the same Lord. An example of this is in Acts 4.36. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas. Let's look at Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation. A Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having land, he sold it and he brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. We don't have a record here of the apostles asking him to do this, but he did it because he wanted to. Does this mean that there never should be a time when there is a need expressed or a need articulated and we shouldn't communicate that? That's not what's being said here. But it's when that becomes the basis of giving. When that becomes not the exception, but the rule, something's missing. When the only time that giving is done is when it's asked or begged or requested, something is missing. The rule should be what we see here in Matthew 10. As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the work of the church. This is what the church is supposed to be doing. Why are we making this point? We're making this point because you don't need money to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, provide neither gold in verse nine, nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. So here's the balance, but let's before we get to the balance, let's get to the basis. The basis is this. We don't need money to do the works of the spirit. But we do need money to do the ministry. Here is what oftentimes people either throw one away and only go with others. How can these coexist? Jesus is saying, look, you don't need money to do what I'm telling you to do. But. To do this work in this world, you will receive money. Your needs will be provided. You don't have to provide them. I will provide them. 
And just like there is a ministry of the cleansing of lepers, the raising of the dead and the casting out of devils, there is a ministry of generosity. There are those who have an abundance like Barnabas. Our giving is a part of our growing. And as natural as our growth should be, so should our giving be. Because the believer gives voluntarily because we have a God who has blessed us voluntarily. When we start giving like this, when we recognize our opportunity to give and not just feel burdened by the responsibility to give, we will find the needs of the work and the needs of the workers and the needs of the people being met. In fact, we will continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers because everyone will have because everyone gives. Remember, it's not about equal giving, but about equal sacrifice. If you were blessed by this video, praise Jesus and be sure to like, share and subscribe. There is much more to see and learn on our website at changeministry.org.